asked some of the seniors this year what their senior year was like. What I was told, and this was especially true for this year, that they had a real sense of belonging. More students ran for student council officers, participated in school activities. They really felt like they had a say in what was going on in schools. Others expressed that their year had gone well, but they were really excited for the students next year who would be offered additional courses in art and PE and advanced pl placement courses. As I attended um, during this last week, um, many events at the high school, beginning with the tech center um, dinner, the senior brunch, the faculty luncheon, and class night, I really learned about the things that I had always heard about BFA. Students really cared about each other. Teachers cared about their students, and students cared about their teachers. It was truly a family. The other thing that stood out for me is um, I've been affiliated with four or five high schools, obviously as a student years ago, but as a teacher, as a principal for 15 years, um, and having my daughter graduate from a large high school like this. And one of the things that happens that's very special at BFA, the athlete can also be a musician, the musician can be an athlete. Um, Kids can, or students can participate in school plays. So students graduating from BFA truly graduate as a well-rounded citizen. Well, to the class of 2006, a big congratulations. You made it to the finish line, and you also made it to the start line. Good luck in all that you do after high school. Congratulations, class of 2006. Okay. My distinct pleasure to introduce Mr. Jim Mercier, the school board chair, and we have the honor to give some honorary diplomas today. First, I'd like to have Mr. Mercier present, uh, proud to present the honorary diploma to specialist Fabio Chenoir, who honorably served our country in the Army in the Korean War from 1954 to 1956. Congratulations. We have a second veteran amongst us, and I'm proud to present an honorary diploma to Seaman First Class Richard Ovitt, who honorably served our country in the Navy from 1952 to 1955. Approximately 18 months ago, in this very room, we sent our brave men and women to the Vermont National Guard. They were on their way to Iraq to protect their children, to protect our freedom. Over the next few days and weeks, most of these troops will return. While clearly these brave men and women made great sacrifices serving in severe and dangerous conditions, others sacrificed as well the spouses, the children, the extended families, all left behind had to also sacrifice. I am pleased to announce the safe return of Staff Sergeant Robert Green and the soon to return Jeff Coots Tuesday from their active duty in Ramadi, Iraq. Staff Sergeant. Staff Sergeant, please stand up.
that was an outstanding community welcome home. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the graduation for the class of 2006. For those of you who do not know me, I am Caitlin Billings, this year's valedictorian, and it's an honor to speak before you today. Our high school years have finally come to an end, and I find myself reflecting on the years gone by. It's been a time of change, with Bell Esprit Academy transitioning to a public school, and the yearbook actually coming out early. It has been a time of sadness, with the retirement of many fine faculty and staff members, and the eventual end of friendships after tonight. It has been a time of achievement, not only on the, so on the field, holla to the state championship softball team, <laughs> but also in the classroom and on the stage with music or drama or dance or any other arena we've decided to delve into. It has been a time when many fantastic memories and friendships have been made. The past four years have been absolutely incredible and I thank you, class of 2006, for being a part of it. So what does one say to such an outstanding group of individuals and everyone that has come to support us as we close this chapter of our lives? We've heard from our host ludatoriums earlier this week speak to a strange bird theme, and rather than keep that up, I've decided to shift subject matters a little. I leave you with a challenge because, well, that's me. But before I get to that, let me tell you the story of a man that has touched my life in more ways than one. I first met Everett Johnson when I was a scrawny 10-year-old shortstop. It was late October, and my dad and I were out on the softball field practicing. Even though there was a light misting of snow on the ground, I wanted my dad to hit me ground balls so I did not get rusty during the off-season. Okay, so I was a little nuts about softball back then. After driving by the field a couple times, Evel pulled up in his blue Honda Civic, sat in his car and watched for a while, and finally hobbled over to where we were. I say hobbled because he was about 75 years old at the time and reminded me a little of Yoda. He introduced himself as a retired pitching coach, although he was still working with BFA and city school athletes at the time, and asked if I was interested in pitching with him during the winter season. I explained to him that I was a shortstop and he could not change that, which goes to show just how much I know. But after some persuasion, I accepted his offer, mainly because I wanted to keep practicing in the offseason. Thus began my career as an Everett Johnson student. From the time I started working with the coach, I could see how much passion he had for the game of softball and his girls. You see, even after he was diagnosed with leukemia and his health had begun to decline, he still showed up every Wednesday afternoon to work with us. And unlike many other pitching coaches across the country, Everett never charged his students, and there were many of us for our lessons. He easily could have made a small fortune doing so. His only request was that we pass it on, pass on our knowledge, our skill, our love of the game, and our desire to succeed onto the next generation of hopeful athletes. I was the recipient of such action from some of Everett's other students, primarily Abby Frazier and Mo McGinn, and to them I am forever grateful. Without the two of them passing on their passion, I would not be the player I am today. The summer after my freshman year, Everett passed away at the age of 80. I was crushed because not only was he my coach, he was my role model and my friend. With his death, it became my turn to pass on his legacy and my love for the game and I've only begun filling that role as I help out Ralph Halbeck, a committed, selfless, and passionate coach, when is equally important in my life and who has also decided to pass it on as we coach youth softball in the winter free of charge. Herein lies my challenge to all of you. If you have been zoning out for the past couple minutes, now is the time you want to pay attention. Find some, my challenge is for everyone, not just the graduating seniors, but for everyone in this room. Find something that you are passionate about, something that brings you joy, something that is a part of who you are today or who you are 10 years from now. Whether that passion be related to sports, drama, fine arts, visual arts, or even education, whatever it may be, take that one thing that you are passionate about and pass it on. Find some kid that looks up to you or an adult or a friend in need and share with them your passion. In doing so, you will forever change that person's life because you took the time to care. And there is nothing more powerful or enriching than seeing someone else sharing in something you love and knowing that you helped instill that love in them. I ask you to remember this. None of us would be here had not our parents, our teachers, our coaches decide to pass it on. I'm not asking you to change the world, but if each of us takes the initiative to pass it on, even if it is only to one other person, we'll be able to at least make a dent in it. 
Now, before I leave you today, I have a couple people to thank. First and foremost, I wish all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. I would particularly like to thank my dad, who has always been for me during the good times and the bad, as well as my mom, who gave up a lot to be a stay-at-home mom and become involved in my life, my sister, who is my greatest fan, and the rest of my family, whose love and support have helped me become the person I am today. I thank Ralph Hallback and Coach Berthiam for their belief in me on and off the field and their tireless efforts to make me and all of their athletes better players and better people. I would like to thank the wonderful BFA faculty and staff. Without your dedication and persistence, none of this would have been possible. To all the veterans that are in the audience today, especially those that have just returned from Iraq, I thank you for your efforts and sacrifices that have allowed us to live safer, more peaceful lives. Finally, I thank you, class of 2006, for the past four years. It's been a blast. I wish all of you the best of luck in the future as our lives have only just begun. Thank you, and please pass it on. Up next, we have Abby Underwood, our senior class president. Abby? My fellow graduates, teachers, parents, and friends, my name is Abby Underwood. As senior class president, I have been given the honor of presenting the speaker our class has chosen for today's commencement address, Mr. Ian Smith. Mr. Smith came to Bellows Free Academy just three years ago, less, year, less years than most of the members of this graduating class. I believe Mr. Smith has left quite an impression on our class in such a short period of time as he has been selected to bestow some chosen words that will inspire us all to both reflect on our last four years and certainly to ponder the coming years that is facing us all. In these three years, Mr. Smith has been nominated for the Five Star Teacher Award. The nomination came about because of his passion for his craft, which is physics. He is young, energetic, funny, engaging, and he's cool in his approach to teaching. In short, we have come to love this person for being so special. Without any further ado, Mr. Ian Smith. Mr. Caron, Mrs. Kajiji, Ms. Munye, distinguished faculty, administrators of Bellows Free Academy, parents and friends of the graduates, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, graduating class of 2006. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to mark it off. <laughs> I am profoundly touched and honored at the opportunity to give this graduation speech this fine and glorious Father's Day afternoon. It is, however, with considerable apprehension that I stand here right now, and let me tell you why. I was searching for some tips on giving graduation speeches, and I found on gradnet.com the definition for graduation ceremony, and it stated, the graduation ceremony is an affirmation of each student's search for knowledge. It is often accompanied by a speech which seeks to put their recent hard or soft work into the context of their future. The ceremony is a trumpeting acknowledgement of your considerable achievement. And the thing is, you only get one of these. And the, there is only one high school graduation that you get to experience. So not only do I have to make this speech relevant to the context of your future, but there is only one person who gets to do that, so I'll do my best. I'm not sure exactly what I can say that will be relevant to you as, our, as an individual, as our community has such wondrous diversity. But I have a few things up my sleeve that may make some sense and hopefully someone will take something away with them. 
I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, looking back on my own life and experiences and searching for something with deep meaning. And then it came to me. There it was, clear as day, the broccoli story. I remember back when I was 13 or 14 years old, my mother and I were watching some after-school TV special. And there was a boy in the show that wasn't too popular, and kind of eked his way through the days. Didn't seem to have an identity of his own. And one day he went to the boat docks, moping around, sulking and saddened by his lot in life. And he ran into the old man on the wharf. And I got to talking. And the old man said, What's the problem, young man? I'm not popular. The girls like the other boys, says the boy. Here's the solution. Tie a broccoli around your neck. Wear it to school. That's all you need. The boy thought of this. And after a few more days of being invisible, he decided to do what the old man recommended. Next morning, he got a broccoli, tied it around his one uh, string around one end and hung it around his neck, and set off to school, petrified at the outcome, unsure of what would bring, and afraid of being dismissed or ridiculed, he wore it anyway. So sure enough, he was noticed. Most popular boys poked fun, but after the initial shock, the kids' attitudes towards him started to change. They started to see how much strength this boy had for wearing this vegetable around his neck. And that despite what he looked like, they saw that he was brave enough to do what he wanted, to be a little different. Broccoli is a symbol of the boy's inner self coming to the surface. It took the old man to help the boy to listen to his own drummer, to follow his own compass, but not to follow. To be brave, to do things that scared him, to follow his heart. Finding out who you really are is a hard thing to do. There are many questions to ask, like, who am I? What do I want to be when I grow up? And can I do that? The answers may not be there at first, but it's imperative that you search for them. You may very well be searching for a long time, but here's some advice that may help. Um, are there any lawyers in the house? Okay, here's a disclaimer. The next statement is not intended to or have ever been here and after intended for parties to engage in the following said activities anything illegal or one that may result in death or any other type of horrific disfigurement. <laughs> Number one, do things that scare you. If you are always doing things that you are comfortable with, you are in essence stunting your growth. By doing things that frighten you, challenging yourself with un unknowns, understanding the risk that maybe there is a chance for failure, you are widening your knowledge and experience base. You can find out as much about yourself in failure as you can in success. You know when you get butterflies in your stomach? Well, that's concentrated energy available for you. As soon as you start doing that thing that scares you, those butterflies vanish. Well, that's because all that energy you're using in your endeavor. So here's what happens. Your body knows you're scared. It gathers that extra energy and well, it, it stores it as potential energy <laughs> right in your stomach and then you can use that energy to put your best foot forward which brings me to my next point give a hundred percent to everything effort to everything you do there is nothing in your life that can afford less than your best the victory will be sweeter your relationships will be more fulfilling your paper will be better the more you invest the prouder you will be of your accomplishment now think about something you are particularly proud of for example, an eBay account, your grade, something that you built, or a relationship with something. And think of how much time and effort you, um, you spent working on that. And I'm sure it's considerable if you're proud of it. Now, why wouldn't you want that feeling with everything in your life? It's not so much the accomplishment that feels good, it's the hard work that you invested that you invested makes it feel extra good. And my third point for you to try the Kung Pao chicken. How will you know if you like it if you don't try it? How will you know if you like that person if you don't engage them? You'll, know, you'll never know what wonders await you unless you try to dip your fingers into everything. Of course, there are some things you will like and some things that you won't, 
But isn't it more fulfilling that now that you know? You may be missing another world by, by not trying to play, picking up a guitar and playing it, going to a karate class, skimboarding in Florida, snorkeling in the tropics, body surfing in big waves, eating sushi, watching a sunrise, going out with friends to see an eclipse, going to a musical, riding a motorcycle, riding a horse, building a table, starting a business, ice skating on a frozen river, bungee jumping, climbing a mountain, owning a cat, <laughs> performing in front of people, traveling abroad, taking a kayaking class, reading a book, even learning how to juggle. Wayne Gretzky, a talented Canadian hockey player, I, mi I misspoke, I really should have said, a talented Canadian hockey player, once said, 100% of the shots not taken aren't going in. So unless you shoot, you'll never score. Unless you try, you'll never know. So now you're willing to try everything, even the things that scare you, and you're going to invest 100% to everything you do. Now that's a recipe for a fr fruitful, diverse life. But now, I have a song I'm gonna sing for you. And it's a song written by Ziggy Marley, covered by a group called Dob and Duella, and revisited and reworded, reworded by me.
Thank you. So speak up your mind. Don't be afraid. Wear your broccoli with pride. It's your ocean. I wish you the best. Congratulations, class of 2006. Guys, if we could hold on to that for a little minute, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, Mr. Corey should be up to give you guys uh, a song of his own, but he is uh, really sick and unable to be here. So keep him in your thoughts, please. Um, I don't know, maybe he was frightened of Mr. Smith's presentation. I don't know. I, I certainly will razz him on that myself. Uh, what an honor to, to again be standing uh, before you to present the, the final group of scholarships and awards. Uh, you are a remarkable uh, group of young people. It is exciting to see you move on to another chapter in your lives. And with it is that very melancholy, bittersweet uh, peace that we feel of, of accomplishment and pride but that kind of butterfly in our stomach because we don't know what we're going into even though we do. And I think Mr. Smith spoke about that. So do that with passion, please. And again, it is my honor to do this. If you would please hold your applause until the end, I would appreciate that. And we are moving into the awards and scholarship portion. Uh, students who have received academic award gold pins, and that means 36 semester A's, which is a bunch, are the following. And again, please hold applause. Megan Abentroth, come up as I'm calling them, please. Cody Barrett, Caitlin Billings, Kayla Deloy, Sarah Dudley, Lindsay Duplissa, Megan Jared. Sarah Jetty, Joel Johnson, Megan Kennison, Aaron Labarge, Jeremy Labor, Daniel Lee, Madeline Manahan, Chelsea Nolan, Brian Osha, Amanda Parrish, Jessica Pillsbury, Jenna Reed, Tyler Smith, Anna Walsh, and Nora Walensky. Congratulations. Our next group of students are those who have accumulated 44 semester A's, and that's a bunch more. The following students come forward, and again, please hold applause. Megan Abentroff, Cody Barrett, Caitlin Billings, Kayla Deloy, Sarah Dudley, Lindsay Duplissa, Sarah Jetty, Megan Kennison, Aaron Labarge, Jeremy Labor, Daniel Lee, Madeline Manahan, Brian Osha, and Tyler Smith. That is a, a remarkable accomplishment. <laughs>
The Personal Achievement Award is presented to a remarkable young woman. And as the years have passed, this student has become a mature, outgoing, friendly, and cooperative young person. She strives to do well in spite of the many obstacles she has encountered. She's a most loyal friend to her peers and works hard to get good grades. She has persevered through many difficult and challenging times, but has totally refused to give up. Her energy and drive are outstanding. It is my pleasure and outstanding honor to present this Personal Achievement Award to Ms. Asha Bolio. dollars for scholar awards are given to two outstanding students, Mr. Adam Cook and Ms. Jenna Mason. Please come forward. The Chauncey B. Warner Memorial Scholarships are given to four students this year. Adam Cook, Amanda Dudley, Amber Felisco, Rebecca Richard, and Emma Stevens. Congratulations. The George M. Dunsmore Scholarship this year is presented to Mr. Kevin Baker. We have six Kemper Peabody Scholarships this year. They are awarded to Max Bennett, Sophia Berard, Benjamin Cote, Sarah Dudley, Alexander Madden, and Rebecca Richard. St. Albans High School Bellows Free Academy Alumni Scholarships are presented this year to Adam Cook and Elizabeth Damaris. The Stephen Allen and Mary Massa Myers Family Remembrance Scholarship this year is presented to Mr. Brian Osha. The Stranahan Memorial Prizes are presented to Ms. Caitlin Billings and Ms. Megan Kennison. And then our last award is the Board of Directors Award, and it is with great pleasure and honor to present these to Tanya Norman 
and Jameer Zayda. Thank you so much. I would remind parents inserted in your program and students and parents our explanations of these incredible awards and I encourage you to, to look those over in your leisure time because community members have certainly bestowed upon each graduating class at BFA St. Albans some incredible financial support. Thank you. Now we're coming down to the main event. Before we go to the main event, I'd like to, hang in there, stay folks. I'd like to recognize our incredible BFA band and the tremendous work that they gave us for our Sunday. Huh? Okay, why don't you hold those down? Thank you. At this point, I'd like to introduce, the, again, the chair of the school board, Jim Mercier, the superintendent, Marilyn Grunwald, and our assistant principal, Wendy Minyard, who will do the honors of the presentation of the diplomas. And with that, I'd like to, to say it is my honor and privilege to present to you the class of 2006. Robert A. Bear, <laughs> Megan Aventroth, Homerido National Honor Society, Scott Akey, <laughs> Stephen Allen, National Technical Honor Society, Whitney Andrews, <laughs> Dalila Anorak. Kevin Baker, Pro Merido National Technical Honor Society. Justin Banfield. Cody Barrett, Pro Merido. Adam Bartomey. Kenneth Bauer. Randy Baxter. Asha Doris Bollier. <laughs> Michelle Bofri. <laughs> Max Bennett, Pro Merito. <laughs> Stuart Benoit, Pro Merito National Technical Honor Society. <laughs> Raymond Benson. Sophia Berard, <laughs> Heather Bergeron, <laughs> Todd Bissett, <laughs> Ryan Bigelow, Pro Merido National Technical Honor Society, <laughs> Caitlin Billings, Pro Merido National Honor Society, <laughs> Ashley Bilodeau, Kevin Blaisdell, Amanda Blake, Jill Blewett, Shane Bluto, National Technical Honor Society, Andre Bolduc, Pro Marito, Sadie Bombard. Amanda Booker, Pro Marathon. Kristen Boomhover. Joanna Borbo, Pro Marito National Technical Honor Society. Stephanie Borbo. Mandy Bowlby. 
Robert Brannan. Ryan Brannan. Todd Broderick. No, Brandon Brouillette. Kyle Brouillette, National Technical Honor Society. Dustin Brunel. Abigail Buck. Adam Bernor. Samantha Burns. David Lee Calvino. Catherine Carpenter. Alex Pearlswell, National Technical Honor Society. Chelsea Charbonneau. James Sharon. William Chilton. Amanda Schwanye. Benjamin Clark, National Technical Honor Society. Jennifer Cole. Shelby Colgan, Pro Maritime. Mark Collins. Ashley Connolly. Lauren Conti. Adam Cook. Travis Coulomb. Kelly Corbeil, Adina Kosa, Curtis Coda, Benjamin Cody, Pro Marito, Levon Cody. Not, not like Corey Kunis. <laughs> Michelle Coots. Kyle Cousteau. <laughs> Javen DeGraff, Pro Marido. Kayla Deloy, Pro Marito. <laughs> Elizabeth Damaris, Pro Marito National Honor Society. <laughs> Joseph Delorier. <laughs> Megan Demag. Amanda Dudley, Pro Merido. Sarah Dudley, Pro Merido. Lindsay Duplissa, Pro Merido National Honor Society. Crystal Edgerly. Christopher Everton. Ashley Feely. Amber Felisco, National Technical Honor Society. Anthony Fisk. George Fitzgerald. Colin Fletcher, Pro Marito. Wade Fletcher, Sarah Francis, Erica Frazier, Heather French, Pro Merido National Honor Society, Daniel Gabralt, Pro Merido, 
Jonathan Gage. Gaston Garso. Johanna Gates, Pro Merido. Nicholas Gentile. Matthew Gibson, Pro Merido. Andrew Girard. Thomas Gleason. Wendell Godden. Chelsea Goslin, Pro Merito. Laura Gratton. Ryan Green. Grace Grundhauser. Valerie Gilmet. Garrett Haybecker. Courtney Hale. David Hamlin II. Danielle Hammond. Stacy Hansen. Kristen McGillan, she just had to leave. Nathaniel Haverlook. Matthew Hawkins. Anthony Helios. Justin Heeman. Tyler Hines. Megan Hodette. Amanda Hope. Ryan Hoy. James Hungerford, National Technical Honor Society. Kevin Hurlbut. Jonathan Highland. Aaron Jacobs, Pro Merido. Hey, I got one thing. Megan Jared, Pro Merido National Honor Society. Danielle Jetty. Sarah Esther Jetty, Pro Merido. Bobby Johnson. Joel Johnson, Pro Merido. Alex Jones. Rachel Kane. Dorothy Kay. Megan Kennison, Pro Merito National Honor Society. Trevor Kenyon. Catherine King. Jasmine Cattell. Ashley Coldis, Pro Merito. Kaylee Krupp. Aaron Labarge, Pro Merito National Honor Society. Jeremy Labor, Pro Merito. Zoe LeBear, Pro Merito. <laughs> Melissa LeBounty. <laughs> Megan Lachance. <laughs> Jacob LaCrosse. Danielle Larson. 
Kenneth Lavalla. Ross Lavoy, National Technical Honor Society. Justin Lawless. Daniel Lee, Pro Merito National Honor Society. Nora Laskowski, Pro Merito. Hunter Livingston. Joshua Longley, National Technical Honor Society. Sarah Longway. Tanya Lovely, Pro Merita. Joshua Lowe. Dustin Meiji. Kayla Manahan, Maidlin Manahan, Pro Marito, Owen Manahan, Amanda Maple, Nicole Maple, Cassandra Martin, National Technical Honor Society. Jenna Mason, Pro Merito. Kaylin Madison. Joshua Maxson. Chelsea Maxson, Pro Merito. Lindsay Mayo, Pro Merito. Joshua McLean. Justine McNeese, Pro Merito National Honor Society. Joanna McRae, National Technical Honor Society. Sarah Mercier. Katie Miller, Pro Merito National Technical Honor Society. Nicole Misset. Larissa Morton. John Nolasco. Courtney Jean Newman. Matthew Newton. Chelsea Nolan, Pro Merito. Tanya Norman. Haley Oaks, National Technical Honor Society. Herrick O'Connor, Pro Merito. Brian Osha, Pro Merito, National Honor Society. Donald Paquette. Danielle Parody. Ryan Parra. Para. Amanda Parrish, Pro Merito. Joshua Pete. Yes. Meg Helke. Rebecca, Rebecca Pepin. Jessica Pillsbury, Pro Merido National Honor Society. Chelsea Pylon. Suzanne Polanchek. Michelle Powell. Jessica Rial. Jenna Reed, Pro Merido. 
Melissa Reynolds. Let's get Kristen McGillan in again. She said the EMTs can you see them from. Rebecca Richard, Pro Merito, National Technical Honor Society. Tanya Ritchie. Jason Robtoy. Mitchell Robtoy. Derek Rogers, Pro Marito. Dustin Rogers. Kyle Rugg. Kyle Ryan. Emily St. Francis. Let Richie go. Let her right there. Good. Richard St. Francis. Kristen McGillan. Travis Savoy. Nathan Schober. Adam Smith. Dakota Smith. Frankie Smith. Jennifer Smith, Pro Marigo. Melissa Smith, Pro Marito. Tyler Smith, Pro Marito, National Honor Society. Brandon Crano. Michaela Stanislaus. Emma Stevens, Pro Marito. Brian Stisser. Joshua Strong, Paige Teeter Whitney, Pro Marito, Corey Teft, Pro Marito, Brandon Tinker, Pro Marito, Jason Trainer, National Technical Honor Society. Luke Trippany, Pro Merido, National Technical Honor Society. Carly Trombley. Joshua Turner. Scott Turner. John Paul Turpin. Abby Underwood, Pro Merido, Jennifer Vincent. Katie Waite. Anna Walsh, Pro Marito. Jeremy West. Erina Widden. Zena Wolcott McCoslin, Pro Marito. Nora Walensky, Pro Marito. Cameron Wood. Caitlin Wood. Samuel Wunsch, Pro Marito. Richard Yanni. Brian Young Jones. 
Jameer Zeta, National Technical Honor Society.